So the mass heater still isn't finished at this point um, and we've just had storm Arwen. There's a couple of breezy days before that and torrential rain and then we had the storm itself which was pretty severe in the highlands. We had uh, locally we had you know 60, 65 mile an hour gusts for you know good 36 hours. Um, there have been trees down and so on away to the south in Aberdeenshire. They were experiencing you know 90 mile an hour gusts. Um, they've still lost loads of power. It was a major storm. It was a big one. Now, at the point that the storm was imminent, we're still waiting on a piece of ducting to finish the entire run so I can get it all sealed in and start it. But as it was already, um, because a house has to breathe and we'd have the chimney blocked up already, and a house needs heat at this time of year, you end up with condensation on the windows and the walls and your, your clothing starts to smell musty, paper starts to wrinkle, uh, it's actually damaging you know, your possessions and the fabric of the house itself. So we made an executive decision and we improvised. So it's this section here that I'm waiting on a 45 degree bit of ducting. It was due three days ago and still hasn't arrived. So instead we basically laid out the ducting and really this isn't this pipe here isn't it's not its final position and so on. But this is we've managed to get the angles working. I spliced in there a little bit of off cut from I think this pipe here. You know, literally everything's at the maximum capacity, just about to get it all work. We taped up all the really leaky joints. That is three layers of aluminium tape. Nothing else. There's nothing solid inside there. It's just aluminium tape. Um, and there's, you know, quite a gap. Probably a good, oh, I don't know, four, five inches, four inches, maybe five inches down in there. You know, it, it's a significant gap. These gaps... Sorry, these joins here aren't even taped up. You can see there's a few that aren't. In fact, this wasn't even taped up the first night that we ran it. Up the top here, again, that join isn't taped. And around the hole itself, of course, you know, we couldn't do much there because this still needs to be moved and adjusted as it's being fitted. I jammed loose insulation around it just to restrict that flow a little. Now, strictly speaking, you know, there's always the concern of carbon monoxide poisoning. So we had a carbon monoxide um, monitor, so we couldn't, not just something that goes off when it becomes dangerous, something that actually showed us the level of carbon monoxide in the room. We burnt this as is, and I mean, there will be leaks all over the place. You know, we're, you know there's potential for seepage. You know, <laughs> I mean, there's so many joints that aren't sealed well. And the entire time, the carbon monoxide in the entire uh, space just remained steady at zero not even a hint of carbon monoxide so no risk whatsoever also another thing we found was you know obviously the burn running and doing all this thing the amount of air flowing down here normally you'd want to restrict it about that much maybe when it's burning so you get a really good flow and a really good rocket to get it so that it wasn't sucking the flames off the fuel itself we had it restricted to that all of the time more importantly and more alarmingly I was really shocked this thing this is a damper most experts will tell you never fit a damper to a rocket mass heater because if it's in the closed position and that's got a flap inside it that completely twists you know when it's across it it, it obstructs it it's got maybe that much all around it so it's not a complete seal but this was put in mostly so that at the time that we at the time that the fire in the box goes out we close the bricks completely and that stops air from flowing down through the system because if you've still got air flowing through the ducts you're going to be losing a little bit of heat from the mass it's not a huge amount and it's so efficient it's not really an issue uh, that's why most people don't bother with them but um, I decided to fit the damper to close off the flue pretty much um, because the little bit around the edge, there's very little flow through that anyway because you've got, you know, laminar flow effect and things like that. It's not like an open pipe where a certain amount of air would still be, you know, just heat would just be forcing its way up and sucking it in at the same time. If you've got a very small amount of gap around it, very little of that happens. It effectively shuts that off. To keep this thing, just to stop from just roaring itself, I mean, just ridiculous amount, um, we kept that damper through the height of the storm, the really peak bit of the storm when we were about, you know, above 40 to 60 miles an hour consistently. This was kept shut the entire time. And just that gap around it, it was still drawing so strongly 
that <laughs> it was so drawing so strongly that this thing was just, I mean, insane. It was roaring. I've never seen anything like it in any Rocket Mass video I've ever seen. And that, bear in mind, is with this still very porous, this gaps and all sorts of, it's been sucking a certain amount of air and so only been maybe, I don't know, 80, 90% of the guess of the airflow was coming through this pipe and it was still, even with that choked down, it was still so intense, the draw, that we were having to keep that cracked just that little bit. It was an amazing system. But we were not cold. Um, I mean, even without the mass in, just running this, just, I mean, that's still warm now, and that fire's been out for half an hour. Just running it um, without the mass at all, so, I mean, the, the pipe flue there was still running quite warm. We were losing a lot of heat from the fuel, not as efficient as it'll be once the mass is in, but it was still running so hot that we got this room up to 22 degrees, and that's we've never managed, even with keeping a coal fire in for, you know, all day long like we did with this, we never achieved that, and we did use quite a bit of fuel. But that was because it was running the entire time at full bore. Um, so it's nice to just have that option, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I would definitely, in a high wind area like the Highlands, always fit a damper. Just because in real storm conditions, um, yeah, it does allow you to, to burn. You've got to be very cautious with it, though. I wouldn't go away and leave it at all. But this is pretty much a load up with fuel and leave for a while kind of fuel. You know, you can you know sit back on the sofa, read a book or whatever while it burns. But it was a bit more hands-on just because I was having to feed it a lot because of the wind intensity. But it was a very, very unusual situation. The people that have lived up here for decades were saying it was the worst storm they've ever seen. You know, the winds were extreme. So, yeah. <laughs> the draw with having the chimney and then that going up to the highest point um, was just extraordinary. You know, the draw was phenomenal.